Luckily, the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers. Everything for your outdoor adventures. Crokies. Made in the USA. Drummond Community Bank. Costa. See what's out there. And Lumber Rock. It's got the punch of a heavyweight and the pounds of a lightweight. Welcome to the main event featuring the new Yamaha four-stroke F70. Tipping the scales at up to 142 pounds lighter than its four-stroke competitors. That's a class-leading power-to-weight ratio. A haymaker of a whole shot. Surprising mid-range punch. Incredible fuel economy. And industry-leading innovation, performance, and reliability. The Yamaha four-stroke F70. Reliability starts here. At highway speeds, things can get pretty windy. That's why the Chevrolet Cruze Eco has active aero grille shutters that close at higher speeds to improve aerodynamics. With an EPA estimated 42 miles per gallon highway, the Chevrolet Cruze Eco offers the best highway fuel economy of any gas engine in America. Always thinking of ways to give you more while using less. That's American ingenuity to find new roads. What is CCA? CCA has been representing recreational fishermen for over 25 years, and when your rights to fish are threatened, the CCA is there to make sure government regulators are making sound decisions. I'm a life member of CCA, and when fishery decisions are being made, the CCA in the room is fighting for our recreational rights. We need to give our kids the same opportunities to fish as we did. Do what I did. Go to CCAFlorida.org and join for only $25 so you can protect your recreational angling rights. Continuing the revolution, faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records or time on the water with the family or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. Don't forget the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report wants to see your photos. Head to our Facebook page and upload your best shots for your chance to be featured right here on the show. And if you'd like to be part of our audience, you can register there as well. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is going on tour. Come out next and meet Captain Rick Murphy and the gang at Bennett Auto Supply in Cape Coral, June 27th from 4 to 7 p.m. and also at the Coke Zero 400 Daytona International Speedway, July 6th at the Chevy Display Booth. There will be fishing seminars, autographs, raffles, and lots of swag to give away. You giving it away? I'm giving it away. He's giving it away. Now let's send it over to Captain Ron Houston. Ron, tell us what you know about sea trout in the Southwest. Well, you know, they can, they can be caught both inshore, offshore, and in the back country or even in residential canals. Offshore can include nearshore wrecks and rock piles, but I truly feel late fall through winter is the best time to catch fit, fish through the region. And with the regulations we've had over the years, trout fishing is the best as it can be right now, especially a lot better than it was when I was a kid. Now, what you want to do is you want to target sandbars, troughs, potholes, and especially grass flats. But the number one key for the guy learning would be the grass flats and potholes to start off with and then concentrate on the other areas I've talked about. Baits include live shrimp, pilchards, and pinfish, either free-lined or under a cork, but there's really no need for that. So go out and have a great time. Topwater plugs, walk-the-dog lures, and twitching baits will work. And as far as soft plastics, the bass assassin four-inch paddle tails, the bass assassin shrimp, the five-inch shad, and the die dappers, can work, be worked a variety of ways, either on a jig head or noise making oval quick corks. But to tell you the truth out there, if I had to pick the number one bait to locate and catch trophy sized fish in the region, it would be an oval quick cork with a four inch sea shad and the color would be chicken on a chain. Believe it or not, you can catch trout right now all year round. Typical size can be 18 to 30 inches in the region, plenty to be caught. But like I said, to get started, start on those grass flats and potholes and work from there. A little more on the inshore part, you know, Right now, the redfish fishing from Dismal Key to Robbie Kick Key Pass, you'd be very surprised how many redfish you guys can catch right now, early in the morning out going from the crack of dawn until mid-afternoon, until the mid-afternoon low targeting outer gulf points and shorelines. Now, in the last several weeks, 
I've worked all the areas from Gordon's, Gordon's all the way up to Lostman's River. And uh, work in these areas, you want to concentrate on working walk the dog lures in bone, chartreuse, orange, pink, and olive in color. And you just can't get out and throw these lures for 15 minutes and expect to catch a fish. Be concentrating on what you're doing. Throw that lure as much as you can until you finally catch a fish. Look in the area while you caught that fish. Power pole or, or anchor up. Figure it out why. Redfish travel in pairs. Just don't leave. Keep working the pattern. But... Half-ounce silver spoons will also work, or root pearl paddle tails on quarter-ounce jig heads. Live shrimp and pilches will work. Typical size right now are anywhere from 18 to 30 inches. And I've got a photo here of a little girl I just took fishing by the name of Ella Walker. It's the first time fishing with me, and believe it or not, this is the first snook she ever caught. She caught plenty more with me in the last couple days. So good job to little Ella. You know, now Ronnie... move on to the offshore part. Yeah. Permit well... bites. It's been great. Actually, guys, all the way through the region, there's nowhere specific. It's just a pattern that we're working, and it's been great south and north. But the bite still remains to be good. You want to concentrate in, in the areas of most noted structure 5 to 15 miles out. Now, obviously, it's a run-and-gun bite, and it's also having patience to wait for the fish. Now, when you run out to most of this noted structure, I note you need to work in and around the noted structure. Look on top and then also drift those areas because most of that stuff's broken up. Look for these fish on your uh, bottom finder. Don't expect these fish to be on top of the water as soon as you get there. Have patience and work in some of these areas. The key bait, the live crabs, live shrimp, or chartreuse, yellow, brown, bucktails, tip with shrimp. Right now, the late afternoon bite's been better after the rains when the water cools and the seas calm down. Typical size right now, 15 to 25 pounds. Have patience when you do this. Another easy bite that's been going on right now is the Spanish mackerels. Marco to Fort Myers Beach, you want to work the beach line to 10 miles out on wrecks, bait pods, and diving birds. As you get out to most of these wrecks, come on these wrecks to draw the fish in if they're not on top or the schools of bait are not there attracting these fish. Once you chum these fish up, once you locate them, relatively simple, white bucktails, silver spoons, live coaches will also work. Typical size can be two to five pounds. Even though it's been real hot all through the region, right now offshore and inshore, the fishing is outstanding. Keep an eye on the weather in those afternoon storms and enjoy getting out with the family. All right, great report, midnight. We're gonna go ahead and get to the hot spots from the southwest region. Captain Ron recommends inshore snook, Santa Battle Stump Pass early in the morning or late in the afternoon on the high tide along the beaches and the passes using live pilchards, thread fins, pinfish, and white bucktails, and then offshore red grouper, Marco to Sanibel, 50 to 60 feet of water during, I mean, drifting using vertical jigs, white bucktails, anchoring using cut baits along the hard bottom. All right, now we're gonna head east. Captain Mike Holiday, in your area, it seems the early bird gets the fish. What do you say about that? <laughs> Hollywood, you there? All right, well, Captain Mike's not here, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at trout from the uh, east region. Captain Mike says inshore. He, we're going to go ahead and start the trout fishing. And what one of the things that's so good about Mike's region is that uh, the spotted sea trout is where they catch a lot, a lot of big trout. The key to the fishing right now is that when the sun comes up, you got to get up early. Once it gets past 9 o'clock, guess what? That trout bite's going to probably be... Uh, slowing down so make sure you get up early the places that he says that you might want to really look is the spoil islands north and south of Jensen Beach and Stewart Causeway the flats from middle mud Creek and the double bar off of middle cove and the spoil Islands south of Harbor Branch are yielding some good numbers and sizes of sea trout the topwater plugs uh, pin minnows and water boy colored 3.5 the three and a half inch bass assassin die dappers, cast them along into the shallows, work them back into the deeper water, will produce limits of sea trout. And if you have fish during the heat of the day, live pinfish, pigfish, sand perch, pilchards, you want to cast those in the three to four foot holes on the low tide, fish the larger potholes on the flats, you'll pick up a few fish as well. The average trout, two to four pounds, with some fish actually being up to seven pounds. Also inshore, he's finding lots of flounder. The flounders are, it's a slow bite right now, but when it does happen, you wanna make sure you got live finger mullets or uh, kitty fish or Kylie fish. I don't know what the heck that is. <laughs> Everybody's got names for baits. We're gonna do something about that in a few minutes. White quarter ounce bass assassin curly tail jigs dragged along the bottom. So he says that really is gonna work well. You're gonna fish 
start the, are concentrated around the bridges and the piers in less than five feet of water. It's usually close to shore where the juvenile, using juvenile pilchers and thread fins are, and the schools are holding. The flounders sit under those schools of feeding bait and they're ready to ambush them. Now, Mike, are you there? I am. I want you to tell us what else we can need to know about flipping baits up current for those flounders. Well, you know, they, they grab the bait by the tail. So when you feel the fish on it, you want to wait like uh, 30 to 45 seconds before you set the hook. I just kind of open the bale and let the, let the bait drop back to them so they can grab the whole bait in their mouth and get it completely in there. Count to 45, close the bale, set the hook. Um, and those average fish are going to be like two to four pounds. So, you know, when you hook them on, you're going to know it. All right, well, let's go ahead and go offshore. It sounds like I covered you for the inshore, like always. I got you back, and so go ahead <laughs> offshore. I'm happy about that. And there, <laughs> you know, there's, there's been a good showing of summer sailfish in 60 feet of water and out, but even more surprising is the number of blackfin tuna that have moved into the area, particularly around the reefs and wrecks in 90 to 250 feet of water from Jensen Beach all the way down to Boynton Beach. The majority of fish are being caught. Um, is, they're either eating live pilchards or thread fins that are slow trolled, uh, in those areas, or they're being caught by anglers drifting in live chum with juvenile pilchards and then putting a bait out in the wake of, the, of those chum baits. Now, the blackfin tuna are notoriously boat shy, so you get your baits out behind the boat a good ways and uh, try to drop down in leader size to 30 pound test to increase your chance of a bite. A lot of times you'll see the blackfin jumping out of the water as they come into the chum, and that allows you to know that it's blackfin coming in so you can drop down in leader size to like 25 pound test without worrying about hooking a sailfish or dolphin that might break that lighter lure, uh, lighter leader, I'm sorry. The average blackfin is 10 to 20 pounds, fish to 30 pounds are in the mix. The hot bite really is a cobia bite that remains strong around the shallow reefs and wrecks in less than 70 feet of water, particularly off Martin and St. Lucie counties. There's, been, there's fish to 70 pounds in those areas caught this week. I talked to Captain Ken Hudson. He had limits of cobia for three days straight, just running and looking for fish cruising on the surface in the middle of the day. He's not even starting to look for them until about 10 o'clock. A lot of the fish are small, so keep in mind that there's a, you know, a 34-inch fork limit, uh, minimum fork limit on cobia. And if you're running and looking for cobia on top, grab a chartreuse one-ounce hookup jig or a dye dapper and try to throw to the larger fish first. Um, once, you, once you hook a fish, the others will get all excited. You can double and triple up, but you want to try and get that big fish because sometimes they'll shut down. You can also drift the reefs and wrecks uh, with a live thread fan, a pinfish, or a mullet and, and have good results there. The bull sharks have been eating some of the cobia, so there's sharks in the area and they start eating your fish. Move on to another spot instead of feeding four or five cobia to the sharks just so that you can boat one fish. Average cobia is 10 to 30 pounds. I got a photo there. Um, Gary Jennings, he caught that 25-pound cobia. He caught it out of a 29-foot cobia, uh, cobia boat during the Maverick Boat Company press event in Stewart this week. And that fish ate a live thread fin. So a lot of cobia in the area right now, guys. All right, sounds like your saltwater fishing's on fire, Mike. How's the bass fishing? Well, you know, I was talking to Scott Martin of uh, Clewiston this week, uh, and he said Lake Okeechobee is not only producing good numbers of fish, but also a lot of big fish right now. On a trip he had with a client this week, they had a six and an eight pound bass to anchor a 30 fish morning. They were throwing all artificials, um, mostly green pumpkin, eight inch worms, rigged Texas style, and they were working the grass lines northwest of the Clewiston Channel. And, and Scotty said to, uh, you know, look for the school fish busting shad at first light and throw either spinner baits or lipless crank baits. And then once the sun gets up in the sky, either switch to live shiners or big natural colored worms or fish the holes in the grass with the swimming frogs. Average school bass on Lake Okeechobee right now is one to three pounds, but it's gonna take over 24 pounds and a five fish limit to do well in any of the local club tournaments. So a lot of good fish being caught on the big lake right now. All right, great report, Mike. Thanks for coming back to us. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the Bennett Auto Supply hotspots from the East region. In short, mangrove snapper and all the inlets on the slack tide, live shrimp, Spanish sardines, or sand perch on 2-0 hooks or circle hooks. Uh, your baits have to be close to the rocks in order to get those bites. And then offshore, yellowtail snapper, 60 to 90 feet of water from Jupiter Inlet to Lake Worth Pier. Pilchard cigar minnows or Spanish sardines, live or dead, will really work for those. All right, good stuff, guys. When we return, we're going to check in with the Central West, and Harry is going to show off the latest and greatest from the workbench. Don't miss it.
The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by CCA, the voice of recreational anglers for over 25 years. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Hookup Lures, premium lures for serious anglers. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. And Maverick Boat Company, makers of premium brand boats. Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder and Cobia. Hi, I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and you already know that whenever I need to repair my boat, my truck, or even my trailer, I'm gonna head right over to Bennett Auto Supply. Bennett Auto Supply has a lot of quality products that's gonna fit all my needs. Whether it's boat chamois, batteries, or spark plugs, they have everything there, and they certainly are a lot cheaper than most marine stores. So remember, Bennett Auto Supply, the best parts, the best prices at Bennett Auto Supply. Want the power of a V8 with the highway fuel economy of a V6? Yes, sir. 40,000 more warranty miles than an F-150 work for you? Sure does. And you get two years of scheduled maintenance. Nice. Copy that. Sold. Chevy Silverado. Right now, get 0% APR financing for 60 months, plus Chevy truck owners can trade up for an additional 2500 total cash allowance, or Chevy truck owners can choose cash allowance and trade up to get a total value of $8,500. Jägermeister Workbench, always talking about new products in the second half of the show. That's your job, so I'm going to sit back and watch you make money. Oh boy, I'm going to do this. Stand back a little bit because you still smell a little bit. So, no, 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 that's all right. All right, this is something that, that we just started carrying. This is a kind of a pretty cool tool. It's, it's pretty much rust resistant. You got a couple aluminum hinges on there. What's great about this little guy right here, you know, trout have teeth, barracudas have teeth, all, you know, little, all these good little things that can hurt a kid. You and I will grab a fish and have no problem, but when you get the family out there, the girls and everything, this is something they can just get right on the lip, crimp it down, and it locks and right. holds it. So now they can hold it. They can hold the fish up. You get a little safety line around your hand. They can sit there and hold that fish up, take a picture of it, and, and just have a great old time without worrying about getting hurt or anything it's, like that. It's the fish grip. I actually just started doing some stuff with these guys over three years ago. Okay. But... This is the one thing that really impressed me about this, Harry, and that is as thin as this piece of paper is. It holds look, it. Look. Look at that. So what it does is it pinches instead of pokes holes through, you know, that the soft fish. membrane of right. a snook or a trout or, you know, you can right. even use these on tarpon. I use them on some smaller tarpon, you know, from right. 50 sure. pounds down because it opens up quite, yeah. a, quite a bit. Man, it's pretty quick and easy, and we've, we've been selling them really, really well. Just brought them on, and uh, it's, been, it's a great little tool, for especially to me, to the, for the kids and, and young ladies or whatever that don't want to touch the fish. All right, so what is this, this Harry? This is really cool. This is something we just bought. It's, it's obviously, it's got the, uh, the, the reflector on the back, your solar power. Right. Okay, you've got three different positions. You've got low light, high light. This thing here, just in the boat, up on it, we, they call it the, the, the lantern the Lucci Lantern, this thing here, just say you have a kayak, you're in a small boat that doesn't have lights or anything like right. that, this thing here lights up 12 feet around the boat. So it's a really cool deal. It's, it's waterproof and it folds all the way down into a, to a little tiny little deal like, like you see oh, right cool. here. So you can store it in the boat anywhere. It's got a year warranty on it. The battery lasts up to eight hours. Wow. With just with just a solar panel just charge, a solar panel. eight hours of good full charge. It goes 12 hours with where it slowly dims down. I really like it. it's kind of cool. I'd like to put a bait inside there and watch it swim around, but <laughs> but I, yeah, I don't think you can get one in there. But all you do is blow it up and it's good to go. So it's kind of a cool little deal. It's 15 bucks. So that's that's nice. That's all it is. 15 bucks. Yeah, only 15 bucks. All right. So Harry, new styles. This is called the Cat K. Yeah, these are nice. Uh, these have which very important for shallow water amber lens. I think, you know, in the shallow water, I used to go with my dark lens on my Costas and for, for offshore, but for inshore, the amber 
You can see the little crevices, the holes. You can see all kinds of stuff off or inside the, the backcountry area. A new color for the Costa frames, which is cool. A lot, a lot of colored frames. Awesome. Yeah. Comes with Costa all the great do that. Costa warranties. Yep, which is a great deal. What do you got uh, here? This thing here is pretty cool. This, as we all know, out in the in the boat, rust, salt water, mm -hmm. it's just terrible. This this little gadget here, what you'll do is you put three in one oil on your hook file, and either way, put a little dab inside. And you can do also your pliers. Uh huh. And everything's going to stay lubricated all the time. And you, have, you know, you grab your pliers; they're rusted, they're stuck. They're sh you just can't do anything with it. Well, now you just take it, put it right inside there. Uh -huh. They slide right in, and it works out really, really well. And you can just keep that on your hip or throw it like a mine. I just throw it inside the uh, yeah, it's got rocket a launcher. Deal for your belt, if right? You want. If you want to do that and keep it handy, but I just throw it my rocket launcher and it sits there. When I need it, I take it out, and it's still just like brand new. All right, uh, what it's else? a great, great deal. Got a flashlight? Pelican has a little flashlight. You can drop it from eight feet. It's got a lifetime warranty on it, and it goes underwater, if you'd like, to a couple feet. And uh, it's a great to have, good to have on the boat again for if you're, you know, you're fishing trout in the evenings, it gets dark, you don't have a light, you got a light on the boat. And what kind of batteries does this use? You C know? batteries. C batteries. Yep, a couple C batteries, that's it. And that's a halogen, up to 2,000. Candle power. Power, which is very, That's very crazy. bright. It's a very white light, not a yellow light. It's very, very bright white light. All right, so what, what is this here? All right, these things here, I'm not a fan of these at all. Okay, but why not? Because this, what this is going to do is this goes up on your T-top. It's on made the by Malin. It's made by Malin. And what happens is you, you'll hook this to your T-top around the top of the uh, aluminum pole, uh -huh. and then this stretches out and goes around the handle of the reel. So it prevents it from falling out of the boat when you're running which I'd rather have you lose the rod and reel overboard because I'd rather sell the product. <laughs> so, but this is a great product to keep your, your tackle, your rods and reels in the boat. All right, all very time. quickly, we also have the Kuroki belt lines. They've come out with some new subliminal belts and the whole thing about this is now you can have your favorite fish, as you know, that fish karma, that belt karma is exactly what you're gonna catch. So if I were to take this barracuda belt uh, out offshore, you're gonna, I'm gonna catch probably a catch lots of barracudas. That's why my favorite one is certainly the tarpon. The tarpon, huh? Now Lauren, speaking of that, you've got some kind of checkerboard type of know, belt that's, on. Yeah, is that's what I was gonna say. Croaky? What am I what am I gonna catch with this? Yeah, this is a croaky. Maybe you're gonna catch Maybe. a tablecloth for a picnic with you and Tony. <laughs> there you go. How's that? How sound? lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and take take us to the next region. Okay, I sure will. We're going to the Central West this time. Captain Jeff Page is here to tell us all about sea trout. Captain Page, take it away. Yeah, Lauren, thank you. As Rick knows, I'm just a trout fisherman from Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> Rick, in the Starbright West Central region, we have a strong speckled trout fishery, and it's good year-round. You know, our largest specks are caught usually in January through April. But with that being said, we still have a good summertime bite as well. The key is clean water and some kind of bait source on the grass so I take your fish and you'll start catching trout. I like to fish topwater plugs early in the morning, like that mirror lure she dog, in the bait schools. When I say bait schools, it can be silver mullet, it can be black mullet, it can be pilchards, it can be lots of ballyhoos and needlefish. But some type of bait schools up on top of a grass flat early I throw the plugs and then later on in the day I'm going to switch off to subsurface uh, twitch baits like a twitch and wrap or a mirrodeen or even a soft plastic bait like that saltwater assassin jerk bait on a quarter ounce hook up jig head. A good color if the water's clean is that chandelier aisle and if the water's maybe a little tannic is that root beer color. Look for trout holding over the flats off Devilfish Key and Cape Hayes Point to the south part of my region. New Pass Middle Ground, as well as the flats off Emerson Point and Rattlesnake Key to the north part of my region. I've got a photo tonight of four-year-old Ada with a trout almost as big as her. She got on a Miralure Mirrodine. All right, good job, Jeffrey. Love seeing those kid photos. What else in shore? Tarpon, even though we have the full moon, is come and gone. Lots of tarpons are showing up. Um, I got a a video that I hopefully we can show next week. Justin Moore, Captain Justin Moore, Scott's son, got a fish today, Rick. Eight foot long, 53 inch girth. Oh my goodness. That's a I know monster. you do that math. It's up in the high 200. Yes, it is. But anyway, 
I hope to get the video to you and see if we can get it on the air next week because it's very impressive. All right, tell me how I can catch one in your region. Yeah, look for the bite along the beaches to continue. Just the pattern's going to change. Instead of casting at big groups of fish that will be pushing down the beach with, you know, with crab or threadies directly into the school, we're going to do something that you've taught me a lot about. Is I'm going to anchor up in a zip code where I'm seeing fish blooping and rolling, and I'm going to throw out a corked penny or a dead bait on the bottom, and I'm going to wait for my bite that way. And it's still a very productive way to catch tarpon. Rolling offshore, Captain Chris Seeger says the red grouper bite slowed off a little after the tropical storm, but it's back full steam ahead, he says. He says he's catching the fish in 120 to 100 foot, 140 feet of water, over hard bottom and roll offs that he's marking, and cut sardines all you need. You don't need any live bait for those red groupers. Species two, sharks. As you know, the tarpon, of course, there's going to be sharks in them tarpon. But if you get out a little further in the Gulf, they're real easy to catch right now. Nighttime, it's probably going to be a little bit more action, but you can catch them in the day. Big bull, bull sharks, black tips, even a hammerhead. Anchor up, drift. I mean, anchor up or drift. Use a half a jack or a bonita. You can be in as close as a mile, go out as far as you want, but get your chum slick going with some blood. Before I go, Rick, big tip of my hat to you and Brian Gorski for pushing me and persuading me to become a lifetime member of CCA. I finally did it, and my, 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 my challenge is to the other fishing guides out there and other guys that talk a good game, come on and join lifetime membership. It's only going to help the sport of fishing in the long run. And like always, y'all get your Chevy truck. Hey, Jeffrey, let me ask you something before you go. You have on your uh, deal here, do you have a trout, I mean, a uh, tarpon photo you want to talk about? Oh, yes. I forgot all about that one. Okay. Yes, uh, that, that's Todd Morton from Morton's Market in Sarasota, Florida. He's been tarpon fishing since he was 15 years old. And that's the first tarpon he's ever landed. All right, good job, Jeffrey. That's a great report from the Central West Region. I'm going to go ahead and look at the hot spots, the Startron hot spots from the Central West Region. In short, fish the dock lights and the bridge fenders during the nighttime on the outgoing tide for nice snook, trout, and reds. You want a free line shrimp or a DOA glow shrimp are the best bet to increase your odds. And then offshore mangrove snapper, the mang bite remains strong in a 80 to 120 feet of water over the wrecks and ledges. Live shrimp or pinfish is the best bet to catch those mangs. You know what the mangs is? Mangs is the mangrove snapper. <laughs> All right, gang, stay with us. When we return, we're going to hear from Jimbo Thomas in the southeast and Jeff Hageman in the northwest. There's much more to come on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report.